Welcome! Today we're making safe kids and strong families. This is a little bit as well. Grab a scoop of security. One cup of resilience. One cup of cell form. One dash of positivity. A whole lot of patience. And a season for hugs. Mix it all up and stay tuned. Brunch for love. My name is Tori Taj and I'm the CEO at Child Crisis Arizona. We are a nonprofit that has been in the Valley here for 43 years and we have served children in the child welfare system and our mission is to prevent child abuse and neglect. Our vision is safe kids and strong families and we do that um, as you are going to see today in a variety of ways. Number one, prevention. We have prevention services in the community and we are helping families with parenting techniques and we are supporting families in many ways. Number two, intervention. We have the Emergency Children's Placement Centers, which is our foster care and adoption program and our three residential homes where we serve children when they can't live at home with their biological family. And in addition, we have early education programming. It's a safe place for children to be during the day. These children are very low income and they depend on us for nutritious meals and a safe place while their families work. And we are helping them be ready for school. Good morning, my name is Larry Wilk. I was introduced to the agency through a good friend who was a supporter. I took a tour of one of the shelters, met with the CEO, and knew I had to get behind this organization. The more I became involved as a volunteer, the more I became awestruck by the magnitude of what this organization accomplishes every day. For me to even be a small part supporting the work of Child Crisis Arizona has been one of the most rewarding experiences I have ever had. Today, in our 43rd year, I share that the COVID-19 pandemic has affected all areas of our service. Allow me to share just a glimpse of this with you. During the COVID-19 pandemic, our goal at Child Crisis Arizona has been to provide families an opportunity to connect through food, love, and nourishment. We were able to partner with the community and local restaurants to provide more than 30,000 meals to families struggling with job loss, food insecurity, and high anxiety. Everyone has had to deal with unexpected struggles during this quarantine, but we know how many of the families we serve have struggled just to put food on the table. This curbside meal program has allowed us to check in on those families and provide some much needed relief as well. We know that these meals are making a difference in our community and we are grateful for all the partners who have made it possible. With your help, we will continue to provide this thankful Thursday meal distribution for as long as it is needed. Well, it gives us a night that we can enjoy ourselves and not have to book and just be a family. Child Crisis Arizona has been here to serve our emergency children's shelter has continued operation without disruption. Parenting courses and counseling appointments have been moved online and families in need have been nourished. Um, so it's just a huge help for us to be able to not have to worry about prepping dinner um, for three little ones for you know, one night a week. So we're super appreciative. If looking to get involved, I can attest that this program not only gave our team a chance to help feed local families, but fed our souls at a time in our country when we could all use it. It is now my honor to introduce you to our heartfelt leader who loves to create big visions for the future, our CEO and my good friend, Tori Tosh. Good morning. I am a gardener. Planting seeds along with the daily routine of watering them and watching them grow brings me so much joy. So in our metaphorical garden here at Child Crisis Arizona, we're planting, tending to, and providing the rich, nourishing environments where kids can be safe, develop strong roots, grow, and change. Speaking of change, 2020 has changed all of us, our community, and even our organization. 
With the pandemic came an entirely new layer of stress and need. Like all of you, we embraced what needed to come next, and we adapted both our in-person programming to virtual services to meet the needs of the most vulnerable. How did we do this? Resilience, adaptability, and perseverance. Despite environmental hardships in Arizona, the succulent plant can even thrive in our harsh climates and in our gardens. They survive the hottest of days and the driest of heats. It is no secret the children we serve have experienced at hardships. So at Child Crisis Arizona, we teach resilience to remind them how strong they are. Whether it's one of our emergency shelters, foster or group homes, or our early education classrooms, we teach children and their families that yes, they can. Yes, they can, in fact, recover from these difficulties. Yes, they can adjust to new and changing conditions. And most importantly, yes, they can achieve success. We modified our early education services to be virtual in their homes. And as you saw in the video, we are providing curbside breakfast, lunch, and dinner, along with learning activities. Over the last seven months, we served them approximately 30,000 meals, and we're not finished. Educating children is the long-term solution in building a stronger community. Education is no longer status quo. Early education is not happening in a designated classroom anymore. It happens everywhere. It's online with virtual instruction and even consists of staff purchasing and delivering books, crayons, colored pencils, paints, Play-Doh, manipulatives, and copies of worksheets. It's even more crucial to provide learning opportunities and critical needs to as many children as possible. Some good news is we added two additional preschool classrooms, but there are literally hundreds on our wait list who qualify. Our 2021 goal of serving an additional 80 young children before kindergarten will help us end the cycle of generational poverty by putting these children onto the path to success. The succulent plant is parallel. It's perseverance. It offers us such positive examples of staying power and beauty. A big part of our work these last 43 years is by creating the right environment for children to thrive. Our work is needed now more than ever. We need more gardeners to help us with our vision of safe kids and strong families. We helped to place nearly 400 children into safe, caring families this year, and 83 of them were adopted into their forever homes. But it's not enough. We need to do even better and find and support more willing families. We anticipate that with this year's limited in-person interaction and the time that children have been in school virtually, a tsunami of children will flood our child welfare system in the very near future. You'll be pleased to know that we've been hard at work and just finished construction renovations to a facility where we will soon be ready to do just that. We must be prepared to recruit, train, and license an additional 50 families to serve the increased numbers of children who need safe homes. When children have environments where they can thrive, we can all celebrate their resilience, adaptability, and perseverance. Together, we can plant the most important seeds, the ones that will impact our future generations through our focus on strengthening families, building community, and saving children. My daughter was 13 and a half when we started and she was so excited. She always wanted to be a sibling. When Greg came into our life, when she was seven, she was just always wanting siblings. Our first two placements we got, and one came, and she left in five days. And our second one came on day two of being licensed, and he left on day six. And so it was like this overjoy excitement, and then devastation. 
in less than a week. We sat on our couches and cried, and just cried as a family, and we said, you know, we just need 24 hours before we do this again. Um, and I think it was the moment that we realized that this was God's plan for us. It was our destiny to help children. That was a, a, a very difficult night. I can't remember the last time I, I cried myself to sleep, you know, as an adult. Um, I don't know if I've ever done that. and. And it was the last thing I would have expected, and it was a lot harder than I thought it would be. But at the same time, we got back up on the horse and, and said, this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And come heartache or, or joy, um, this is what we're going to do. We're going to provide a home for kids no matter how long they're here. And a piece of us leaves when they leave, and that's yeah. okay. The day we snuggled that little boy on that day was, we walked out of there and there was no doubt. There was no doubt whatsoever that he was ours. So Bentley was taken at birth um, with meth exposure, THC, and uh, STD. So Bentley spent 12 days at the um, Children's Hospital um, recovering and doing antibiotic treatment and coming off of the meth exposure. Um, he was, at that time, he was placed in foster care um, and we took him just before he turned 11 months. Six weeks later, we got a phone call that said, baby brother is born. The day I met Isaac, it was just surreal. We fell in love with him. I remember taking a picture in the parking lot at the hospital and sending it to Greg and just saying, oh my gosh, he's so precious and he is ours. Then Isaac, when he was born, he was also born meth exposed, THC and a STD. And Isaac spent 14 days at PCH um, in the children's hospital and that was just brutal. I watched this little baby who has sores all over his face and his body from the drugs. Um, watch him just withdraw and withdraw and withdraw. Um, and it was around the clock. It was constant and it was just terrifying. He's a fighter. He is 100% a fighter. It's not all roses, but it's the biggest blessing we've ever had. Like, yeah. it doesn't matter what they came with or what, they, what they'll face in life. There are kids and we'll face it with them. Those two have brought more to our home, to us as people, to Alexis, than we could ever give them back. Yeah. Um, and they're not two years old, one year old yet. <laughs> Yeah. So. <laughs> With Child Crisis, we are having a relationship. We're in this together. We're all doing the same work to help children um, grow and thrive and be in a safe environment. I can describe child crisis as my lifesaver. Being a great grandparent here with three great grandchildren under the age of two, and not knowing what to do or how to do it, to me, child crisis is my lifesaver. I couldn't have done it without child crisis. Life with the pandemic truly changed because I got three babies at my age and trying to work with them, teach them because they're having, they're being homeschooled now. And them being confined, doing a life change is really hard. And when I got, had to start keeping them home, I ran out of reading materials, drawing materials. I need those things, I'm able to come here and they help me with those things. Now I get to come up and pick up lunch for them. That helps a lot. 
They have books for them. They give them books. They let me know if there's something that my children need here at Child Crisis, let them know. It's really hard raising kids, but it's not that hard because the different activities they learn here, they taught me at home. I love what they've learned, so now they're teaching me, and it's great. and it's great. Love when I walk in here. I feel confident. I feel knowing that I'm not going to be turned away or that I, that someone will say to me, I'm sorry, but we don't have time. We're, I feel like I'm at a home that with people that care about me and my children. For thousands of children in Arizona, abuse and neglect is an everyday reality. Child Crisis Arizona is proud to be part of the solution, moving vulnerable children and families toward paths of hope and healing. We are proud to introduce to you former shelter child Isaac Davis. In November of 1998, I was seven years old and getting ready for my second ever day of school when I heard a bang at the door, followed by screaming and yelling coming from the front room of my apartment. It was a SWAT team carrying out a raid on my home. The next thing I remember was hugging my mom and dad as they knelt on the kitchen floor. Later that day, I arrived at the children's emergency shelter. I can still feel the love and warmth of the staff that welcomed me as I walked through the front door that day. Over the next few months, I would celebrate Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and my eighth birthday with them, creating bonds with the staff I would never have thought possible. As an adult, what impresses me most when I reflect back on the time I spent at Child Crisis Arizona is the love I felt from each and every staff member there. They were truly my family, offering unconditional love. Believe me, I tested it. While most of the time I was a happy kid, some days were better than others. I would act out by kicking, screaming, crying, and yelling at those simply trying to care for me. But if this tested their patience, they never showed it. Never once did I feel judged or put down for the way I acted on those days. I was one of the lucky children who was fortunate to be reunited with my family. Since that fateful day, my mom and dad have been the most caring, loving, and encouraging parents a kid could ever ask for. They harbored no resentment. In fact, they are so grateful that when I asked what they wanted for Christmas, they would ask me to donate to Child Crisis Arizona. The support I received during those most vulnerable days in my life undoubtedly helped to create the strong and successful family that I am a part of today. It enabled me to achieve my dreams. Without them, I would not have made it into Arizona State University where I graduated with my bachelor's degree in biochemistry, nor would I be where I am today, living in Huntsville, Alabama with my beautiful fiance, Katie, and in my fourth and final year of medical school at the Alabama College of Osteopathic Medicine. I am eternally grateful to Child Crisis Arizona and to all of those who helped support their mission. Today is about recognizing the ever-growing population of less fortunate children who need help to one day write their own success story. Thank you, Isaac, for sharing your remarkable story you are a testament to the very important work being done by Child Crisis Arizona and the work that needs to continue to support the more than 13,500 children in Arizona's foster care system today. My name is Leah Phillips, and I have a very special connection to Child Crisis Arizona. A few years ago, when my husband and I became licensed foster parents, Child Crisis Arizona introduced us to a boy living in their emergency children's shelter. That is where we met and fell in love with our future son. We fostered him for 18 months before adopting him last year. This experience drove my desire to volunteer and I became a member of the board of Child Crisis Arizona two years ago so that I could continue to make a difference in the lives of foster children in Arizona. The needs are great, and you too can be one of the people who care. I hope today's program has inspired you 
and it is my privilege to tell you how you can support the important services we provide and to ask you to donate to the ongoing operations of Child Crisis Arizona. As you heard earlier from Tori, I too am worried about what will happen to the vulnerable children who are desperately in need of our early education and foster care services. Collectively, it is our responsibility to continue to strengthen families and save children. So today, I am inviting you to join me by becoming a member of the Building Stronger Futures Giving Society. This special group of donors supports the ongoing needs of Child Crisis Arizona through pledges that help sustain all of our programs. Due to the incredible generosity of our leadership pledge donors, we have more than $400,000 towards our fundraising goal for this event. The leadership donors would love to see this number matched and to help raise $800,000 for the children and families. Please join me in thanking them for their generous commitment. We are hopeful that by sharing this matching challenge with you, it will inspire you to make a meaningful gift within the next 24 hours to support the programs and resources that have benefited me and so many other children and families. Please know that your pledge of $1,000 or more for five years is considered a Building Stronger Futures Giving Society donation. A gift at this level is about $83 a month. The impact of your gift will provide one child in need a week's worth of safe sleep, around-the-clock care, and medical services each year. This is a great opportunity to utilize your full Arizona foster care tax credit, which is a dollar-for-dollar -dollar credit on your Arizona state income tax liability. You can click the link in the upper right-hand corner now to access the donation form. You may also access the form in the email or text you will receive or on our website after the program. You can also donate any amount you choose to help us reach this matching opportunity. Whatever you are able to donate, including the gift of your time today, will make a major difference to children like my son and all of the children of Child Crisis Arizona. Thank you. A Thousand Tomorrows began here today. Child Crisis Arizona. Safe kids, strong families.